Hello again, everyone. I'm Kimana Sotirkos, one of Kubeflow's Notebooks Working Group Tech Lead. And today I'm really excited to show you another brand new feature we have for Kubeflow 1.3, and which is the ability to track your metrics and see them live with TensorBoard and even while the notebook is still training your, day, your, your models. So first off, I would like to set some expectations. This is in a very alpha state. It was our project that we did for the Google Summer of Code. And we're really happy that we finally got to integrate it with the platform. So I'll, I'll say again that it's in, a, it's, early, in a, it's in its early stages. And the main goal of this right now is so that it can help it can help us start a conversation with users around how would they like to use metrics and see them live while their models are being trained. So with this introduction, let me actually take you to a, a more detailed demo this time where I'll be showing you a more end-to-end -end approach of how we will see the metrics. And for this one, we're going to follow the official uh, tutorial from TensorFlow on how to use TensorBoard. And at the same time, we're going to see how we can visualize these logs. And this is going to run in our cluster. And we're going to be visualizing it live while the data and the models is being trained. So let's go and really quickly create a notebook. I'm going to name it, let's name it Tensor for board metrics. So let me use a TensorFlow CPU image. And I'm going to use a workspace volume. Let's give it 10 gigabytes. And it's the workspace TensorBoard metrics and mounted into my home directory. This is all I need for now. So let's just launch it. Give it a couple of minutes to start up. I've created this image before, so it shouldn't take too long for the pod to get up and running. So, while this gets done, let me start copy pasting. We're essentially going to copy paste and apply these cells and see our logs live. So there we go. The notebook is ready. Let me navigate to the page. It's not a Jupyter Lab, it's a plain old notebook, but it should do the trick for now for our needs. So let's hit the first one. Import TensorFlow and Daytime. Yep, there we go. Now, okay, I want to delete the logs directory. I don't have anything in my PVC right now. So, yep, just the notebook we just have created. This is a very simple code that just fetches the data set. Although I'm not a data scientist, so don't mark my, don't take my words for granted. So it got all the, the data I needed. And the last part of the of this code is going to be to actually train our model based on this data. Now, what I want to show you here is we're not going to just use five epochs. We're going to make it like 25. I don't want to finish while I'm talking. And what's going on over here is that we configure a TensorBot callback in which the training, the fit function is going to use to store our notebooks, our, uh, excuse me, our logs. So it will save it under logs fit, but Okay, let's make it logs db. This will make it clear a little bit later on why we use this naming. So we're ready to go and let's hit run. And there we go. We can see our epochs starting and our node, our model is being trained on the cloud on its own. So if I would like to, whenever, whenever I would like now to visualize my, mat my, mat my metrics, I would have to log back into my notebook server and click another cell to be able to visualize it and of course wait for the training. So, and another also use case is that what if a notebook, a model is being trained from a pipeline? I wouldn't, I would have to, how could I be able to spin up an, a TensorBoard instance and visualize my model as it's being trained? So these are the initial problems we wanted to tackle with our first iteration of the metrics component and TensorBoard and that is, we want to have native support for TensorBoard via a custom resource CRD, a custom resource definition. And essentially we can start a TensorBoard server on its own and actually tell it that, hey, my data lives inside of a PVC and it's under this path. So this is my, my workspace. And the logs, as we've seen, they live under the logs TB directory. 
Yep, it's over here. So I can just create a new server and tell it. Okay, so I will just create now a on demand the TensorBoard server that will be using the persistent volume claim. And this is my home directory for my notebook where the training is writing the, the data live and the metrics. And the TensorBoard server is going to use this PVC, this volume, and show me my, my metrics live at the same time while my model is being trained. So let me hit create. Okay, the CR is submitted successfully. We'll have to wait a little bit as the underlying object gets initialized. All right, there it go, it's ready. And as we can see, we, uh, this the log, the path of the logs is it's a PVC, the name of our of the volume and the actual path logs TensorBoard. So let me hit connect and see what's going on. And right off the bat, we can see all of our metrics visualized from TensorBoard, while at the same time, as we've seen, the ten, the training still takes place. So. I could have my training done in a via a, a Kubernetes job, a, a just even a pipeline itself, and I can just spin up TensorBoard instances to visualize my metrics whenever I want. And once I'm done, I can just go back, delete my my TensorBoard server, and that's it. I don't have to really to really do any tricky tricky solutions to see my logs. So this is the demo for this time. And at, at this point, I'd like to iterate on some on some of the strong points we, we la, uh, of this implementation and why we like it, and also give you a more clear and in-depth explanation of things that we would like to further improve and what are the, the currently the caveats of using TensorBoard. And the good thing that we really like is, as mentioned, the fact that having being able to launch TensorBoard servers whenever we want allows us to completely decouple how the notebook, how the model is being trained. It doesn't have to be trained from inside the notebook server in order to visualize it. So we could even we could use any way we want to train our model and we can visualize its metrics live and on demand. And also note that the logs doesn't have to be stored in a volume. They can also be stored in an object store like, like S3. So this is the the our the, the our proof of initial proof of concept that we would like to give to users and hear and get their their feedback. And of course, we would definitely like to hear how other people are using TensorBoard or what other kind of metric visual visualization tools would they like to see go hand hand in hand in Kubeflow. So at this point, I'd also like to give you a, an explanation of the hard points right now of using TensorBoard. And this goes with this, it, it's going to be in the same lines with the previous web apps. The, the first thing that I'm going to be mentioning is that right now, it's on the one hand, it's really easy to select how you want to have your data for TensorBoard. But at the same time, it's the same problem where this is a custom resource and it's going to be applied to the cluster. And right now, the user does not have any option of further extending it. So if the user would like to do something even more advanced from what we what we give out of the box, currently it's impossible. And this is one of the first priorities we want to work on, which will allow people to even to fit ten, how they launch TensorBoard exactly on their needs. The second thing is that while we do have the support for object store, right now we make some assumptions like, for example, or where to find the credentials. For example, if your credentials would live on GCP, right now the controller would expect, and it's hard coded that you'll have a secret name in a specific way on the namespace. So it so it will mount, it will try to always mount this secret on the TensorBoard server so it can find the credentials. This is again a limit a limiting factor as it makes um, integrating TensorBoard and using it with Object Store just a little bit more difficult because we'll need to document how you should name your secrets, etc. And in the future, we would like to move move away from it. But definitely, if we have a if we allow the user to be able to manipulate the YAML, it should really reduce a lot of this friction. But overall, we would really like to hear your feedback as well on how would you like to have the app manage the credentials. We have a lot of thoughts on how we could have the user select the credentials, but Let's discuss more on the actual issues and on the notebook work groups meeting. 
So this is the demo I would like to show you. This is the use case of how to launch a notebook or any or any mechanism that trains our model and see our metrics live. So again, we're really looking forward to your feedback. This, this is going to be an alpha feature that we're really looking forward to launching and see you all next time.